My name is Pearl and welcome to my script tutorial for beginners lesson six. So back in lesson five, we learned about if statements and how you can have multiple conditions inside of your if statements using the else if clause. Well, today we'll be learning about the switch statement and how it can help you a lot if your if statements are getting way too long. By the way, Check out my latest app on the App Store, Pearl Calculator. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so what is a switch statement? Well, a switch statement is basically a replacement for long if statements that are comparing a value with a lot of variations. Okay, so on my screen here, I have a new playground, and inside of my new playground, I declared a new variable, and I called it fave color. And let's say that fave color um, stands for my friend's favorite color. And let's say we don't know our friend's favorite color. Um, but let's set fave color to green. And let's say we want to write a piece of code that um, finds our friend's favorite color and prints it out. To implement this piece of code, we could do some if statements. So if fave color equals red, then print red else if fave red color equals blue print blue so you see the pattern here, right? I would have to go on and on and it probably take forever until I get to my friend's favorite color. So you might be asking now, is there something else that we can do instead of just implementing tons and tons of if statements? Well, we can use the switch statement. So let's learn how to declare a switch statement. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these if statements and I'll replace um, that with switch. And I'll just select the first option I get in this drop-down menu that appears. And now Xcode has given us the structure of a switch statement. Let's begin by filling in these placeholders. So the first placeholder is for the value that you want to compare. Um, let's put fave color into here. And for the second placeholder, I just want to put in a pattern that I want my code to identify. So let's say we want to identify if our friend's fave col favorite color is red. Then we would put red in this pattern placeholder here. And inside the third placeholder, which is code, you would write the code that would execute if favorite color does equal red, which is the pattern. Um, so let's write print my friend likes red or you could just print out red. And the last placeholder is another placeholder that says code. And inside this placeholder, I'll first just um, type in my friend likes colors. So this line of code right here, um, this line of code is basically the code that runs if 
none of the patterns on top of this default keyword are true. So this block of code, this default keyword, and the, line, the lines of code after it, they kind of stand for the else clause inside of an if statement. It's the thing that runs if all of the other conditions on top of it are false. So that's what this default keyword is. So let's review this switch statement one more time. First of all, we have our switch keyword, then we have our value that we want to compare. Then we have two curly brackets, and inside these two curly brackets, we first have a case keyword, and then a pattern that we want our computer to identify. Then after this case keyword line, we have a line of code that will be implemented if the pattern on top of it is true. And finally, we have our default keyword. And after this default keyword line, we have our code that will run if none of the conditions on top of this default keyword are true. And we can also add multiple cases we can add a case for orange. Um, and print orange and so on. And before I end this video, I just wanted to share with you guys two really useful functions of the switch statement that I think would help you a lot. So the first thing is that you can add um, or you can assign two values to one case keyword. So let's say that we want to print out a line of code, the same line of code for three patterns. So let's say it would be green, blue, and green, blue, and purple. So those are all cool colors or cold colors. Um, so we could say that my friend likes cold colors. Um, so now if we run this code, then if my friend or my friend's favorite color equals green, blue, or purple, then our computer would print my friend likes cold colors. And the last and final thing that I wanted to share with you guys is that you can add a range of values to one case keyword. And I'm just going to declare another switch statement for this and also another variable. And I'll call this variable um, favorite number and favorite number equals three. And let's say our value is fav number. And for these two um, code placeholders, I'll just write um, my favorite number is somewhere between one and five. Um, and for the default code, I'll just write, I like numbers. And for our pattern, I want to add a range of numbers or a range of values. Um, I want to assign a range of values to my case keyword. And in my case, I want my case keyword to check if my favorite number is from one up to five. Okay, so to add a range of um, values to a case keyword, you just want to um, first write your value in which your range will start, then three dots, and the value in which your range will end. And now our code will check if fave number is one up to five.
And now if we run this code, then um, our in our console, we would have my friend likes cold colors printed out. And also my favorite number is somewhere between one and five printed out onto our console. And that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and please share this video if it was useful for you. Please like, comment, and subscribe and see you in the next video. Thank you.